Key on Mid Channel. My name is Gabby. And I'm Connor. And today we're filming one of my favorite vehicles to drive on the Kia fleet. And that is the 2023 Kia Sorento. Now this specific trim level is called the X-Line. It is the entry level to the 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine, which is a ton of fun to drive. I'm actually gonna be posting a test drive video, not on this specific car, but a Sorento equipped with the same engine transmission on Monday if you're curious to see what it's like to drive. So today we're gonna do a full walkthrough of the interior and the exterior. Camera, camera, Connor's gonna be our cameraman today. Uh, camera he's Connor, not our usual thing. guy, but Connor, you work in service, you work in parts, parts you do videos. A couple you, detailing jobs here and there. You know a lot about these cars. Try to know, yeah. So It's always good to be knowledgeable. Connor's gonna tell us some of his favorite things about this car too, as we're right. filming our video. So if you are new here, we do these videos every weekday at 2 p.m. I don't wanna bore you with all the details, but we're gonna go through our usual spiel skip to the three or four minute mark to actually get into the walkthrough. So we do these videos every weekday at 2 p.m. for three reasons. Number one is you may own a Kia or Hyundai vehicle and we wanna give you all the information there is to know about these cars, kinda of like an owner's manual, but maybe a little bit more entertaining. Number two is if you were in the market for a vehicle, we want you to add Kia or Hyundai or even both to your selection list. We think these vehicles offer great value. We love talking about them. and We wanna give you all there is to know about them. Then number three, I think you know this one. You wanna buy it from us. Why Come not? to our dealership. If you we're live in, in Canada. Brantford. True. Yeah. <laughs> we're here in Brantford mm -hmm. and we're an actual dealership. Yes. And on top of our Kia dealership, we have two other dealerships, right? Uh, Owen Sound Hyundai and, oh goodness. Brantford. And Brantford Hyundai. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So all your Kia and Hyundai needs, we're happy to help you out. Their dealerships will take great care of you. I'm going to quickly have Connor grab the camera and we'll show you guys how to join a live video. If this is your first time joining a live broadcast or I guess watching one of our videos, um, actually seeing it live is quite different and it is far more fun. <laughs> so if you go to our channel, just the Kia Hyundai channel, and go to the home tab or the live tab at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I said that so many times today, but you'll see a video that says upcoming. All you have to do is click on it like you would a regular YouTube video. It'll load you in. You'll see multiples of me. It gets a little trippy. But on the right side, <laughs> Gabby, you're speaking some Yiddish words. Oh no. On the right, you will see um, our live chat box. And we're getting some not so nice comments today, but it's live, so let's go. <laughs> All right. First, I'll talk about what's under the hood, and I'll pop it for you guys, of course. So get a nice good look at the front end before we open the hood. This pink color is called Wolf Gray, and it is absolutely stunning. It is almost like a flat finish. Or I shouldn't say flat, but almost like a primer-like finish, right, Connor? Not a lot of sparkle in this paint. No, it, it almost is like a clear-coated primer almost, mm -hmm. but a little bit nicer than, than primer. Yes, much nicer. It looks very sporty. I love it with the X-Line trim package because of the rugged accents. It looks so good. Okay, under the hood, speaking of sporty, 2.5 liter four-cylinder turbocharged GDI engine tied to an eight-speed wet-type dual-clutch transmission. This vehicle even has paddle shifters if you'd like to manually select your gears um, and it is a ton of fun to drive it is very responsive very quick but also very fuel efficient so you can get a 281 horsepower 311 pound feet of torque sorrento with 8.7 liters per 100 kilometers combined on the highway or not combined on the highway that's amazing fuel efficiency for so much power and so much fun we'll also get those headlights on so you guys can see what it looks like running sorry i gotta go around you to get the keys so we have beautiful LED daytime running lights on this vehicle. Very, very sharp, bright ambers as well too. Your turn signal indicators. Yeah, sorry Brad, Gabby doesn't have heels on today. Yeah, I know. Comfort today. And some LED headlights as well too. So take a look at that. One thing I love about this Rento is how sharp the styling lines are on it. It is such a Beautiful vehicle. I was going to use another word, but I don't know if it's YouTube appropriate. All right, now down here, we have some more shiny black accents along the lower portion of the grille. And this vehicle is also equipped with a ton of safety features. So one being forward collision avoidance. I always like to talk about this when we're in the front because forward. All right, so this forward collision avoidance picks up vehicles, of course, but also pedestrians. So if your vehicle senses the risk of a collision with said pedestrian or a vehicle, it'll warn you. And if you fail to react, it'll slam on the brakes for you. So potentially avoiding the risk of a collision. It is a super great feature, kind of scary when it actually applies, but could save your life, could save somebody else's life. And what more could you want? <laughs> we'll close this up, take a look at the wheels. These are 20 inch machine finished alloy wheels with continental tires. They're not a black wheel, although it probably looks like that on YouTube, uh, more like a charcoal, charcoal gray, so a dark, dark gray. 
for your mirrors, they are black with a turn signal indicator, and we have specialized X-Line badging. So this is the same finish as your wheels, that dark metallic color, and your X-Line. Up top here, we have raised ladder style roof rails, again, tying in to that rugged X-Line off-road appearance. And here in Canada, the Sorento comes standard with all wheel drive and terrain modes. We'll get into that when we hop in the vehicle. Since it is a turbo, a lot of people ask about gas and if it's premium, nope. Just regular unleaded gasoline, it goes on the left side. This car was just washed, so it's a little wet. Close that. <laughs> all right, and now let's talk about space. Here in Canada, you can only get the six-seater configuration with the turbocharged engine, so that makes this vehicle the entry to a six-seater. Take a look at the configuration. We have three of our seats down right now. So you can see, well, actually, we'll knock this one down too. Oh, never mind. The passenger seat's too far back. But if you look on the left side, you can see what it's like with everything fully down. My mom has a Sorento, it's a plug-in hybrid, but still the same seating configuration layout. And I've slept in this car before when I was car camping. It's pretty comfy, far more comfy than tent camping. So if you're into that, you'll love this. All right, under the floorboard here on the left side, we have a ton of storage. And then on the right side, we have our lift for our spare tire. The actual spare tire is located underneath the vehicle. Can we see it here? Oh, uh, uh, we probably can't really uh, show it to you. Oh yeah, you can see it. Perfect, it's there, trust me. And to knock these seats up, you have these tethers that have Velcro on them so they won't fly away. Pull them up, super easy to do so. Flip up the headrest. You can tell this car literally just came off the truck. Just leave that there for now. And each seat does have car seat tethers, which is quite handy. To knock them down, you do the reverse. So you give it a pull, knocks the headrest down. You give this a little push. Everything folds in nice and flat. I'll have Connor quickly show the buttons on the right side. So we have our air vents with um, fan control and you can easily turn them off. USBs on both the left and right side. A little slot here for storage and a cup holder. You also have these two convenient buttons to knock down your second row of seats so you don't have to go around and do it yourself. Now to bring them back up, you gotta do that manually, but it's super easy and I'll show you in a bit. Uh, we also have these car seat, clip, car seat belt clips so you can tuck everything away. This is great if you are using this vehicle for cargo or storage moving because everything is tucked to the side and not in the way of whatever you're putting in here. But yeah, lots of space back here. I will show you guys what seating looks like once we get inside the vehicle. And this is a manual lift gate. All right, so I will also talk about our rear wiper, or lack thereof, just kidding, it's there. It's underneath the spoiler, so not only does this clean up the look of the rear end, it also protects your wiper from snow, mud, dirt, dust, just general things that could impact the life of your wiper blades other than use. And along the back, we do have rear parking sensors. If you're reverse parking this vehicle and you approach an object, whether it be a vehicle or just a trash can or something, your vehicle will beep to let you know you're getting near something. Pretty cool. Connor, what are your thoughts? So my favorite is kind of the satin finish on the rims. Mm -hmm. It's not really a glossy, you know, it's more of a satin, not really matte, but it looks like a satin matte almost, if yeah. that makes sense. Well, satin's almost like a mix of matte and shiny, right? I would say so. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. It's a beautiful car. Are we gonna jump inside? Yeah, do you wanna come to the driver's side actually? Absolutely. All right. So most of the tech, not most, almost all of the tech features in this vehicle is shared with the lower trim level, which is called the LX Premium here in Canada. The main difference is of course, the seating configuration, the engine, the transmission. So we do get power seats, they are cloth. They are heated as well, three different levels for both the driver and passenger. You also get lumbar support, which is quite nice. Um, I will say our cloth seats definitely heat up faster and they don't get as hot in the summer, which is a huge bonus, it's super hot. All right, I'm gonna hop in quickly and show you guys some of the finishings on the door. So we have again, this dark, almost metallic graphite -y color, looks beautiful with a nice satin aluminum door handle. Pretty basic door handle, but works great. <laughs> That's all you want in a door handle. Mirror controls here, door locks, and then window controls. You also have window child locks. Right over here, we have our brightness adjustment for a gauge. So if you find this is a little bit too dim or a bit too bright at night, you can adjust it as needed. You also have a quick button to turn on or off your lane keep assist and one for your traction control. The vents on these vehicles, on these vehicles on the Sorento are quite nice. Um, smaller vent, larger vent, cool shape. Really cool design. That's all I got to say about the vents. Connor, do you want to join me? All 
All right, your seat's way back, but I think we should actually leave it like that to show Jeez. how seating can look like once we're showing the back seats. All right, but in the cabin, you're greeted with a lot of space. I have a ton of headroom and my seat is way, way up. It's very much raised up. Uh, so if you're sitting a bit more lower, you'll have even more room. You can bring your seat as close or as far to the steering wheel as you'd like, and it's really easy to make adjustments with a power seat. You can even do it on the go without reaching between your legs and grabbing that bar, which is quite nice. On the steering wheel itself, it is a leather wrapped steering wheel that is heated, so perfect for Canada. On the left side, you have some Bluetooth and media controls as well as volume controls. Paddle shifters are located just behind your steering wheel, so your downshift and your upshift. And then on the right side, we have some driver assistance controls. So over here, you'll have your menu button that lets you cycle between the different menus in your gauge cluster. So you can see where you're at in your lane, you go through your settings, see your digital speedometer, and even your fuel efficiency. Just to the right of that, we have our button to quickly turn on or off our cruise control, set the speed, and then stop it or restart it. And then once again, to the left of it, we have our steering assistance button. So this steering assistance will have a, a has a camera right over here that watches the lanes ahead of you. And if there's an upcoming curve on the road, your vehicle will take it for you. Now, if there's anything on the road, let's say a trash can or something flies out and you need to make a, a move, your vehicle will still allow you to steer as needed. So it's not gonna completely take over. You're still driving the vehicle. It's just a very nice assistance and super easy to turn off if you're not a fan. Now in the center over here, we're greeted with an eight inch, I was about to say eight speed dual clutch transmission, an eight inch touchscreen display with wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, which means whether it's an Apple phone or an Android phone, you can seamlessly connect your, your phone to your vehicle and have all your apps and information displayed up there. So if you have an iPhone, it's gonna look almost exactly like your phone's home screen. You'll have your Waze app, your Apple Maps, your Spotify, your Apple Music, whatever you use on your phone, right over there, super easy to use, and it works fantastic. On top of that, we do have regular media options like your radio, your Sirius XM, and Bluetooth. Um, up, we have a physical button for a radio, physical button for media, and a start button. So when I press this, it'll take me to a menu that lets me choose what I want that button to do. If I make it display on or off, every time I press that, it'll turn on or off my display, which is quite nice. You can use it for a more useful feature, whatever you like best. This car is totally customizable for you. The right side, we have seek, track, and even a setup button. You also get a tune and a volume, which is quite nice. Just below that, we have our hazards. Or, yeah, I can't think of any other word for them. It's your hazards. Four ways. Your four yeah, ways, flasher, yeah. yeah. Your blink, not blinkers, <laughs> flashers. All right, right down here, we have our climate control panel. So this vehicle is equipped with dual zone and automatic climate control, which means I can set my temperature to whatever I like exactly, press auto between one of the three different intensities, and it'll leave me at that temperature, not go over, not go under, and I don't have to fidget with it ever again. Now, let's say your passenger likes to fidget with it. They can set their temperature to whatever they like. So just like that, and we can have dual climate control or we can sync it again. It's totally up to you. You also have manual controls, so if you want to manually select the fan speed and the temperature, you can do that as well. And you can turn it off, which is excellent. Just below that, we have this hidden storage panel, so you can close it or open it. And you know what the best part about this trim level is? It's not piano black. So no fingerprints, no dirty marks, no scratches. It hides all of that way, way better. I mean, someone, someone mentioned that they didn't like that there was no piano black. Really? I was going to disagree. So I love the look of piano black. I hate the real world application of piano Trying black. Trying to keep it clean and... It's a pain in the butt sometimes, but it looks really, really good. It's, a, it's just a matter of if you're up to cleaning it a lot. All right, down here we have a USB for charging, a USB for media and software updates, and then another USB for charging. Just below that, you even have a wireless phone charger. So if you own a Kia Sorento, and you tell me that your phone is dead, I know you're lying. You have so many options over here. Anyway, heated seats for driver and passenger, three different levels each. And honestly, the application, the styling, and just how easy it is to use as you're driving or riding in the seat as a passenger, chef's kiss, it looks amazing. And then our, I was to say, our steering wheel, this is our gear selector, our transmission, um, just a regular automatic application. Now it is a dual clutch, but it, operates like a regular automatic, you do have the option to manually select your gears as well by shifting it over to the left and then up to, oh my gosh, upshift down to downshift. 
Over here, we have our drive and terrain mode select. So here in Canada, we have snow, mud, and sand mode standard on our all-wheel drive Sorrentos. You can manually select whatever you'd like. However, since it is a smart type all-wheel drive system, it'll already adjust as needed based on the amount of slippage your vehicle detects while driving. Um, while we're in the drive mode selection, I don't know, is it picking up on camera? Yeah. Yeah, okay, perfect. We have comfort mode, eco mode, sport mode, and smart mode. You can easily select between those by twisting the dial as well. And let me tell you, the drive modes in this vehicle drastically change how the ride feels. Comfort mode is a nice smooth drive. There's still a ton of power, but it's fairly fuel efficient. Eco mode kind of dulls down the throttle and it'll give you maximum fuel efficiency. Sport mode does the complete opposite, but you'll have a huge smile on your face. And then smart mode adapts to whatever you're doing. So if you're kind of taking it easy in the city and then you hop on the highway and you give it some gas, it will temporarily switch you to sport mode and then take you back to eco or comfort as needed. Below that, we have some more physical buttons. So one for a heated steering wheel, one for our auto hold braking feature, your downhill braking assist, your electric parking brake, a button to turn off your parking sensors, a button to view your parking camera. There you go. And then our auto stop and start. So this vehicle does have that feature that will temporarily turn off your engine when you reach a red light or a complete stop. If you're not a fan of it, you can press that button, it turns off. But you'll have to turn that button on again the next time you fully start your car. All right. Um, I'll show you a little bit of the storage options here. So a very, very wide and very deep center console with this little storage compartment. And then Connor will show you guys the glove box. Very spacious. Wow. Got a bunch of manuals, every book you need. Yep. 23 Sorrento, both in English and in French. Ooh la la. And I'm assuming these are some warranty books. Yep. Lots of space in there. Uh, another beautiful graphite finish. I need to find a real word for that that isn't graphite but that's the best I can do right now. It's a really beautiful cabin up here. Let's take a look at the back. Vamanos. I might come over to Connor's side just to show you how to straighten out the seats. So right now you can see it's semi-folded. All you have to do is give it a push, nice and easy. So Connor's seat again is fully reclined. So this is what worst case scenario seating is gonna look like. Worst case scenario seating is unfortunately the best case scenario in some other cars. There is seriously still a really good amount of space here. My knees are not touching the backs of the seats and I have lots of room underneath the seat to move my feet around. Now on top of that, I can recline my seat a little further if I want more space. And then it also depends on how far your front passenger is sitting. Um, I'm gonna hop out of this seat, move over to the next one to show you what it would look like with a seat that isn't so further or far reclined. And you can see, again, an absolute ton of space. These seats are very comfortable, probably the best seats in the house, I'd say, other than the joy of driving this car. You do have armrests that you can drop down and bring to whatever height you'd like, right over there, or put back up. And I might grab that from you, Connor, just to show these little hidden side pockets. So while you're in these back seats here, you have access to these little side pockets. Both seats have them and they are mesh, so they stretch quite a bit. And then in front of you, you have a leather pocket and another mesh pocket. Built into the backs of the seats are USBs, which is quite handy. And then we have, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm just laughing at some of the comments. Um, we have our air vents back here, our rear air vents, 12 volts, and another USB. In the center, there is a pretty good amount of space if anyone needs to get to the back. However, there's an even better way of hopping into the back. So I'll give this back to Connor, and I will show you how to do that right after I bring the back seats up, because I didn't do that earlier. So I'll show you again how easy it is. Grab the latch, give it a pull, flip the headrest up. Grab the latch, give it a pull, flip the headrest up. Okay, let's do this. So, to get into the back, first things first, make sure you step on the step. Don't get the driver's carpet sturdy. There's a button on the very top of the seat by the shoulder that folds the seat down and allows you to freely move it on the rail system. From there, I just hop in and I'm inside and it's pretty comfy back here. So let me just move the seat back in place. 
will go into the far seat. So with this seat fully reclined, this is all the way back. My knees still are not touching the seat ahead of me. I might take that again from you. And I might flip the camera. All right, so my knees are still not touching the seat ahead of me. I mean, they could if I really push forwards. Headroom wise, I still have a really good amount of space. I have these storage pockets here and then the USB as well as an air vent. And then I'm pretty comfy as long as you don't have someone sitting right beside you. Even then there's still a lot of room. <laughs> Zoran said Connor's thinking, how on earth did I get this job? And seeing you through this window here, your face <laughs> says exactly that. I was looking at the, the airplay went off on the TV, so I was trying to look at the, the computer screen. Oh, and keep in mind, I climbed into this seat with that front seat being all the way back. So there's not a lot of room for me based on our current seating configuration to get in and out. But I can still do it, and I am considered a full-grown adult. So <laughs> do with that what you will. <laughs> no, seriously, it's quite easy to get in and out of the uh, Sorrento. And then one thing I really love about it is the seats are also easy to move. They move very, very smoothly, um, and they lock into place quite easily. So configurating your seats is very nice and easy. Connor, can you get in the back? I can get in the back here. Do you want to go on the left side maybe? Because sure. this one's all the way back. What's... So Connor is taller than I am. Although I'm, I say I'm 5'10", but I'm actually 5'9 and 3 quarters. <laughs> Whoa. And... All right. I mean, I wouldn't want to go on a 10-hour road trip, but, you know, driving to Toronto or you know, a few hours away. You know, I still have a decent amount of space and, you know, my knees aren't cramped and... Yeah. Yeah, not too bad. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, I'll let you get out. All right. But Gabby is considered a full-grown adult, allegedly. I'm actually quite tall. Some. Some customers that watch our YouTube channel have come in and said that to me, that I'm taller than they thought. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> I'm actually just really short. Hmm? So I'm actually just really short. Yeah, Connor's just really short. Um, Connor, say, say this word. I'm not gonna say it. Sportage? Yes, yeah, see, everyone in Canada. I'm not uh, saying uh, sportage or yeah. whatever you're. Everyone in Canada says sportage. And I don't know why my thing isn't casting over there, but we gotta. We gotta fix that. The comments are crazy <laughs> today. It must be a Friday thing or something. What is this? A school for ants? <laughs> school for ants? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, Gabby, when is the EV9 gonna be? So we should be receiving ours probably late fall, and then our customers are expected to receive theirs early 2024, but it could even be late fall. I don't know. Um, what happens when the forward collision activates? Does something need to be reset? No. no. So um, I've had my warnings go off a couple times just by people cutting me off and hitting the brakes. Cutting her off. C cutting me <laughs> off. I was not weaving through traffic, Connor. Thank you very much. Anyway, um, where was I going with that? So if your forward collision triggers, whether it be just the alarm, so to warn you, or the actual braking assist, there's no reset that has to be done. It's still an active assist. Now, if you get into a collision, and it damages your forward collision avoidance, that would uh, be a different that's story. That's a little different, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. No sunglass holder. No? So most of our cars don't have them anymore. Oh, no way. Yeah. Okay. You but you know what does new. have it? The Kia Rio. The Kia Still? Rio has a sunglass holder. Oh, there you go. Kia EV6 doesn't. Like, so many of our cars don't have it. All right. I'm going to have to scroll up a little bit. See. Yeah, you know it's bad when half these messages are deleted. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's Zoran. Zoran, we love you, but some of the stuff you say. Crazy. Um, graphite color, something only Gabby would say. So when I started doing these videos, I graphite. that was the only word I could think of. Whenever something was like slightly dark gray, I'm like, it's graphite. -y. Tit titanium yeah. color, but that doesn't really go off the tongue. Yeah. Graphite -y sounds yeah. better. Everyone yeah. roasted me for that, oh. and I haven't said it in so long until today. So. <clears throat> Um, okay. Did I miss another amusing start today? No. I don't know if you knew what happened yesterday, but no. something very embarrassing happened to me. 
I'll just watch these. That's deleted. It's deleted. Oh. <laughs> um, let's see. This is the one I bought in August, and I love it. Haven't used the all-wheel drive yet. Ooh, I'm excited for you. Definitely, if you do live somewhere with snow or just any sort of fun yep. conditions, check empty it out. Empty parking lot. Yes, empty <laughs> parking lot. It is a ton of fun. This car handles amazingly. Am amazingly? Superb. Superbly. Um, Floyd said, I thought the Rio was discontinued. It is. However, we still are it receiving. Is? Oh, I learn something new every day. Connor, keep oh, up, man. Oh, my goodness. Um, yes, it's discontinued, but we still have a couple coming in, trickling in. They are all sold at this moment, but yeah. Does he have any flat colorways like Hyundai? As in matte? Yeah. Oh, we, yeah. We do. On the Sportage EV6. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um... Getting up my driveway in the winter requires four-wheel drive. Ooh, you would love a Sorento. Love. Connor, you should watch the Kia channel. <laughs> Connor's on the Kia channel. The Kia Hyundai channel does not watch it. You're like me. I'll, I'll watch it occasionally. Thanks. <laughs> did, did you like and subscribe? Of course. Okay, I was going to say, get out. <laughs> Leave. Um, do you still have a 2022 Hyundai Santa Fe base? Unfortunately not. All of our Santa Fe's at this point are 2023's. Um, I think only Gabby is updated on what models are discontinued. Yeah, now. let's go with that. Yeah, we'll go with that. Sometimes, one. yeah. Um, how much does it cost in Canada? So let me get the exact MSRP for 2023 because I don't have it off the top of my head. That's one thing I don't know. Okay, well, I got to entertain. I don't know any cool dance moves. <clears throat> no, but um, let's guesstimate. I'm going to say this car... MSRP 48.9. That's what you think it That's is? That's what I, my guesstimation was. You're wrong. Okay. <laughs> it's 40,595. Oh, oh. 8,000 more than, or less than I thought. Okay. Yes. See, I think okay. this trim level is an absolutely great value. Yeah. I think you get a great amount of features for it, and it looks badass. Can yeah. I say that on this channel? I don't know, but I'm gonna. You get flagged for language? Bad. It looks bad. Good. <laughs> um, sorry guys, I'm out of it. Not Three sure if this ago. was asked in your previous videos, but do you have any any news regarding the recently announced Kia EV5? So nothing for Kia, from Kia Canada yet, but you best believe we will let you know once we know. I can't keep track. EV6, EV9, EV5, they're flying out the door here. The solo traveler said I was able to send Gabby out of this room. Yes. I only <laughs> leave this room for price information and if I need to cough or sneeze. <laughs> That's all. Um, needed as a PHEV without the third row seating. Kia Sportage PHEV. Will you guys be doing a 2024 Sonata review? Absolutely. Once we get the 2024s. So that's our only issue right now. That's why lately we've kind of been doing a lot of the same vehicles, maybe just in different colors, because we're waiting on new and exciting product. Mm -hmm. We're waiting very patiently. So patiently. All right. Are we gonna do a Santa Fe? Right. Like, Sorry? do like are we gonna have the new twenty four Santa Fe here soon? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, soon. I don't know. Well, whenever Hyundai Canada slowly trickles them in, Fair we'll enough. get them. But we'll absolutely film them. Oh my gosh, Coach any, Swissy any said. Any news on the EV twelve? Oh my goodness. Uh, Kia cars are very scary to have in my city of New York. I hope the technology changes to protect the car from these Kia boys. The Kia boys. So. Great comment. Um, as of 2022, all Kia vehicles in the States have to be built standard with mobilizers. So the Kia Boys trend will no longer work. <laughs> That's horrible. But yeah, it, it is pretty. That's, you wake up and your car is gone. Oh, I will say here that's... in Canada, um, it has been standard since 2007 for all our vehicles to have immobilizers. So it's never been an issue here. But yeah, yeah it's, it it's, sucks, it's hard. Hey, Joseph was wondering my thoughts. I think it was on the new Elantra and Sonata. Uh, I'm not really a fan of the Sonata look, mm -hmm. at least like the 23, 22 er, uh, years. I, I like the Elantra N. They sound really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Elantra N sounds amazing. I'm not going to go out and buy a $40,000 Elantra. I, I simply can't afford it. But if I had the money, it'd be nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Let's see. Brad said Kia mandated it, the US didn't. Uh, I know for Kia, they did change their ways in the U.S. and have made it standard since, but yeah, it hasn't been mandated as long as it's been in Canada, or mandated at all, I guess. I've seen two or three questions about what trim 
has the black headliner, and I'm not too sure. The black headliner in the Sorrento? Yeah. Oh, I, I hate this question. I, <laughs> Because I'm in them all the time, but sometimes I don't remember. Right. And they don't list it on the brochures either. I want to yeah. say the EX Plus and Up or the EX and Up, because those typically have the dark accents. Actually, you know what? I don't think any of them do in the Sorrento. No? You know what? I'm going to come back to that question one day. Right. I forget mm -hmm. who I, I've seen it a couple times. Mm -hmm. but. Um, let's see. So we got some people saying they don't like the redesign of the 2020 Borsonada and some people saying they do. Oh, Christian said. Ooh, finally a question I can't answer. There's a lot of them I can't answer. <laughs> a lot. Let's see. Uh, gravity gray or wolf gray, what do you prefer? Gravity gray mm, is like that dark yeah, graphite yeah. gray. <laughs> if I was to buy it, I don't know. I'd have to flip a coin, to be honest. Yeah. Or they're, they're both. They're both yeah. colors I'd be super happy with. Yeah. So that's, that's, that'd be a hard one. Yeah. Now, if you ask me if black, I hate black cars. Yeah. I love the look of them, but you look at them wrong and they start scratching and... I, no. uh, just delivering them too. I'm never happy with how clean they are because right. they just show every little bit of dust. Or Watermarks or... Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay, any questions about the Sorrento specifically? Oh, did someone donate $5? I, I think that's what that's that crazy. means. That is insane. Oh Thank gosh. you again. Coach, let's see. A super chat. Oh my gosh. That is nuts. Um, Has anyone donated before? I've never seen that so before. I think that's the fo first donation. I've maybe. never had that. That's crazy. Big shout out to you, Coach Swissy. That's our entire marketing budget oh, for this there month. We go. Maybe we'll get a new gimbal. <laughs> that's cool. Um, let's see. Gravity Gray for me. Thoughts on the new Sorrento update? Super pumped. Saw the photos. I think it looks phenomenal. No idea if it's coming to Canada and when it's supposed to be coming to Canada. Well, I'm assuming it's going to come, but like, I don't know if it's yeah. going to be a 2024 change or 2025. Because the Sorrento is the one car we haven't gotten any news for for 2024 yet, hmm. which is nuts. Um, all right, let's see. I don't like either the 24 Sonata or the Sorrento. Hmm. Um, I'm sorry to hear that, Sam. Let's see. You, you, y'all need to do a general car review channel. We'd have a lot more stuff to film if it was general. Yeah, right, that'd be cool. Mm hmm we just got, do you know the year of the uh, Dodge Dart? Uh, 70. So a 1970 Dodge Dart Swinger, our service manager just bought so yesterday. Cool. It yeah. is wicked. That would be awesome to have on our channel. That would be. That would be cool. Yes. Actually, you know what? We could probably film it on this channel. Let us know if you guys want to see something like that. Old versus new? Yeah. That would be kind of cool. Compare it to like a Kia Forte? Yeah. Right? What would you pick? The classic Dodge <laughs> Dart or a brand new Kia Forte? The Forte. Has lane keep assist <laughs> <laughs> and power windows. All right, uh, let's see. Um, our video is every Friday more than 30 minutes. Is this how, more than how 30 minutes? We've been here. Oh, we've been on for 33 <laughs> minutes. Okay, guys. That's it for today's video. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for all the questions. Yeah, thank you for the questions. A couple of compliments, too. So thank you very much for that. Thank you to Coach Swissy, by the way, for our first yeah. ever super chat donation. That's, that's insane. Um, seriously, that, yeah. that's amazing. All right, we will not be filming on Monday because it is a holiday here, but I do have a video scheduled to be posted then. So stay tuned for that, and we will see Another you then. Another one. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Got 10 bucks Thank this you. video. Next video is going to be crazy. We're going to have confetti. Mm, yeah. Oh, no, I'm not going to promise Next that. week, we're going to be <laughs> filming a Lamborghini. <laughs> we got a budget now. That's amazing. All right. I forgive you, Zoran. Ciao, ciao. <laughs>